We're all used to having religious freedom, right? I mean, you can choose to believe whatever you want to believe, and as long as it doesn't hurt anybody, nobody's really going to come and question it. You're not going to get somebody coming, knocking at your door, asking you about your religion, and then accusing you of lying. And you're certainly not going to end up in jail for it either. Unfortunately, this hasn't always been the case, as I'm sure you all know. Religious freedom is still a very new idea, and even today, we don't have it everywhere in the world. Just look at the Middle East, for example. They have no religious freedom. But even the Middle East wasn't half as bad as Spain in the Middle Ages. Oh no, because Spain in the Middle Ages was under the influence of the Spanish Inquisition. Welcome to Box of Knowledge. As per usual, let's put all this in historical context and get some background. Spain from the year 720 to about 1492 was under Muslim rule. The Muslims, they came in, they kicked out whoever was there and they took over the territory. But at the same time, the Christians were in the process of something called the Reconquista, which simply means to reconquer, the reconquering of Spain. By 1492, pretty much all of Spain had been reconquered by the Christians. Now there were still some Muslims left in the territory, but they didn't stay there for too long as we're going to see shortly. But besides them, there was another minority group in Spain, the Jews. The Jews had come into Spain and really managed to build for themselves a nice life. I mean, they had good jobs and were financially stable, some even worked in government. But as you all know, Jews have always been the target of a lot of anti-Semitism. I think for like 2,000 years, it's safe to say that Jews were at least hated somewhere at any given point in time. Spain was no different. For example, in Spain in 1391, there was a thing called a pogrom, in which you literally have a mob that goes outside, they hunt down a target, and do whatever they can to kill that target. In our case, of course, it was the Jews. If you're gonna do something for 2,000 years, well, why stop? Just keep going. Now, as a Jew living in medieval Spain at that time, you would be probably scared. I mean, it would be strange if you were not scared. There's literally a mob outside looking for you trying to hunt you down. So of course a lot of Jews chose to convert to Christianity because conversion was the only way that the mob would leave them alone. These people were labeled as new Christians because the Spanish monarchy wanted a way to differentiate these new conversions from the old Christians that were Christian for many generations. Now these Jews were not going to give up their Jewish identity so easily, right? Being a Jew is something that you have to be proud of, especially given the history and the suffering that your people went through. So a lot of these conversions, as you can imagine, were fake. They were only so that the Spanish monarchy would leave them alone and that the mob would leave them alone. And this produced a new kind of Judaism called Crypto Judaism, in which officially on the outside you're a Christian, but in private you're still practicing your Jewish traditions. Now back to the Spanish Inquisition. The Spanish Inquisition wasn't the first one of its kind. There were a few others in medieval Europe. Now an Inquisition is simply an institution that defends a set of beliefs. In our case it was Christianity. Anything against Christianity is considered a heresy and thus against the church. And remember that this is the Middle Ages. The church was everywhere, the church was the central authority. So an Inquisition made sense. Now since Spain had just been reconquered from centuries of Muslim rule, the Spanish people wanted a sense of unity. They wanted to feel like they were one people again. But how can you have that if you have Christians, Jews, and Muslims all living together in one place? Like today that might work, but back then in the Middle Ages, forget it. The only real solution was to make it illegal to be a Jew or a Muslim in medieval Spain, which they did in 1492 and 1502 respectively. And then you have to make some sort of institution that's going to take care of that and take care of any problems, the Spanish Inquisition. They literally gave Jews and Muslims a simple choice, baptize or leave. Many left, but also many stayed. Now remember that in medieval Spain, there were a lot of crypto Jews left, fake Christians, and the Inquisition could never attack a Jew or a Muslim, it just can't, it only attacks Christians. And since all of these crypto Jews were now officially Christian, they were prime targets for the Inquisition. And so begins a long quest of trying to eliminate crypto Judaism from Spain, a long, painful, and horrible quest. For those that are curious, here's how an Inquisition works. And if you don't want to know, I think that you should because it's really messed up and very interesting. At first, you might get accused. You might get two guards showing up at your door, they take you with them, they say nothing, and they just put you in jail. There, you literally had no idea how long you're going to be there for, why you were there in the first place, which is generally what was going to happen to you. You could wait anywhere from a few days to a few years. Now just think about that. Years waiting in the dark without information, that must be terrible. At the end of the way, they would take you out and bring you before the Spanish Inquisition. You would face your accuser, which sometimes could be a member of your family, and you would face the accusations against you. Now naturally, you're going to want to defend yourself. You're going to want to deny the accusations. Who's going to want to plead guilty, especially in front of the Spanish Inquisition? But that's okay, because the Inquisition is expecting that from you. That's why there's torture. They would take you into a room and torture you until you talked. And if you think that you're tough and you can handle it, I have news for you. This was the Middle Ages. They had no rules. They just didn't care. Technically, they had rules, but they just tore the paper down. They were going to torture you until you either died or you talked. But if you talked, you were going to die anyways afterwards, because this is the Middle Ages. 
After the torture, they would usually decide on your fate, were you to be found guilty or not guilty. Honestly, don't expect to be found not guilty, it almost never happened. You were pretty much guaranteed to be guilty. Then you would be given your sentence, either life in prison or being burnt at the stake. And funny enough, I say funny because I have a dark humor, a lot of people never even made it to the trial. The waiting time was so long and the conditions so horrible that they just died in jail without knowing anything. Like that, that, that sucks. No matter the outcome, they would usually take your property too. Doesn't matter if you have a family, doesn't matter if you have people living in a house, they would just take your property for themselves. Remember in the introduction, I said that the Jews were financially well off. They had good jobs and they had a lot of property that the Spanish monarchy wanted. And one way to get that property was to use the Spanish Inquisition. Jews were not the only targets of the Inquisition. It was also the Muslims and the Protestants, but generally the Muslims had a much easier time. Remember that an inquisition is simply something that defends a set of beliefs, in our case Christianity, so anything against Christianity is considered a heresy, even the subdivisions in Christianity. You'd be surprised to know that it lasted well into the 1800s. The concept of an inquisition lasted about 700 years, while the Spanish one lasted 300. Out of all the people that were tried, 2% were burnt at the stake, and these were events. There were crowds, crowds cheering, I mean it's the Middle Ages, what do you expect? So what brought the inquisition to an end? Well, when you're living in a civilized society with a lot of trade, with people traveling from one place to another, you're bound to encounter different ideas than your own. One of such ideas was the Enlightenment. It was all about human virtues, doing the right thing, and being ethical. Essentially everything the Inquisition was not, and you just couldn't really have an Inquisition anymore. Once you reach a certain standard, it's kind of hard to go back. So in 1834, they officially abolished it. But guys, 1834, that's like not even two centuries ago, that's very recent. And that pretty much covers everything there is to know about the Spanish Inquisition. It was ugly, it was violent, and it was unfair. Now I haven't talked about everything, and the things that I did talk about I haven't gone into too much detail. That's okay, that's done on purpose. I want you guys to go out and research on your own, and then you can come back here, leave a comment, and we can have a discussion. Because I really want this to be a two-way thing. And bonus points for you, you might get featured in next week's video as a fan of the week. With that being said, my name has been Darius Cosden, it's been an absolute pleasure, and I will see you all next Wednesday.